Um, hello and welcome everybody to Hashtag Open. Tonight we have a really exciting topic to kick off Anal August. We're going to be talking all things butt stuff. Um, I'm Miley, Director of Product for Hashtag Open. And if you haven't heard about us, Hashtag Open is a dating app that was created for people that find traditional dating platforms a little bit limiting. So when you're seeking ways to identify authentically, maybe you're looking to date with a partner, maybe you're looking for different experiences like threesomes um, or dating, you know, in groups. Groups, and that's why we offer Dating Updated. So when you join us at Hashtag Open, you're going to find a community of really open-minded members. 97% of our members actually identify as or say they're interested in exploring some type of ethical non-monogamy. We also have a lot of members that identify as queer, trans, non-binary, um, and people who are interested in exploring sexuality. Beyond that, if you're somebody that's exploring with your significant other, you can create a solo account, but we also offer partnered accounts that will allow you to swipe, match, and chat with other members either together or on your own. And when you match with other users based on interest, we give you the option to use hashtags. So as you're building your profile, you're going to use hashtags to indicate your preferences and your interests as well as your boundaries. That's going to make it easier for you to find other members that are looking for similar interests, similar experiences, and make it so that you find the matches that are more meaningful for you. Um, we've got just over 58,000 members in our community. We had a great month of growth in July, and we're continuing to grow. So if you haven't checked us out, we would love for you to download the app at hashtagopen.com. We're completely free for iOS and Android, and we'd love to see you swiping. Um, we've got some exciting, we have a ton of members who are specifically looking for some fun anal play for anal August. So Sarah, will you tell us more about tonight's topic? Absolutely. So normally this is where I get to tell you about how amazing our, our guest is. So tonight I get to tell you about how much fun we're going to have. Um, we love, uh, so I, I am the uh, Director of Communications and Operations um, here at Hashtag Open. Um, and for those of you who don't know me or haven't met me, I've also been a sexuality and relationships educator with an emphasis on uh, pleasure-based sex and kink and alternative relationships for a little over 20 years now. And um, I love having conversations about empowering sexuality because for me coming to terms with who I am as an adult and loving myself involved me embracing and accepting all of the different ways that I wanted to experience pleasure and and playfulness. I am really excited about talking to the, about this because Miley and I have co-taught a few sex toy workshops and we've had big conversation workshops and um I think that this one is going to be like the, I was going to say, you're, you're kind of at the bottom of, of our skill level. <laughs> I, I pun so bad. I am oh, so I here do. for all of these puns. Um, yeah, it might get a little shitty, you know, who the fuck knows, <laughs> but um, so, I'm sorry. Um, so, honestly, um, Sarah, I'm not here for it unless you've got puns, hon. I, I got puns. I got puns <laughs> on. Um, so, what, well, here's somebody the, stop us, please. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Just encourage us is what we want. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about anal play. So, honest to God, um, I firmly believe that like the ass is the final frontier when it comes to sexual pleasure, because um, I'm also a nerd. So, like, there you go. But, like, here's the thing is, like, no matter what you've got, everybody has a butt. And everybody's butt can experience pleasure. Um, and for some people, it's something that they've been really super nervous about for a long time. Um, we condition a whole lot of stuff, and we have a whole lot of assumptions around ass stuff. So, um, you know, like, what I want us to do tonight is I want us to talk a little bit about getting past some of those taboos and getting past some of those myths. Um, a little bit of, I want to give you some anatomy so that you kind of understand what's going on, because, like, the difficult part, I think, about play for some time some folks is that it's hard to visualize what you're working with when you can't see it. And so we, we want to demystify the butt a little bit and show you what it looks like from an anatomy standpoint. Um, and we're going to talk about just kind of getting started. So if you are curious about um, 
you know, like what what might feel good. You're trying to explore solo. You're trying to explore with a partner. Um, you've got a little bit of experience, but you want to think about it in a new way. We're going to give you some of that information tonight. Um, while we're doing this, um, please feel free to drop any questions over in the chat section. Um, we will make sure that we answer them um, because we want to make sure that everybody comes away from this workshop with a uh, little little bit of information that you can use to kind of um, inspire your own pleasure and your own play. Um, so we're 100% down for questions in the chat. Um, and um, yeah, Hannah, if you want to put up that first slide when you get a chance, because uh, we'll be getting back to it. So Miley, I have a question for you. What do you think folks, um, when we think about like the myths and the taboos around ass play, what kinds of things do you think are getting in the way of people having a better understanding of it? I would say the number one thing that I feel like I hear all the time is like, does like enjoying anal play make me gay? Is that, you know, it's, mm -hmm. and this idea that enjoying pleasure, um, anal pleasure uh, changes your sexuality, um, yeah. I think is a huge mistake conception that really limits people from exploring, um, limits men especially because, you know, there's so many stigmas against um, men and, and sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that's such a limiting factor from people really beginning to explore more um, and feeling really stigmatized from even, ex like, knowing where to begin or knowing how to mm -hmm. ask questions. Um, and I think it just so people just kind of stay away from it. Yeah. And I know that for, like, I was really lucky in that my first anal play experiments, like, had a happy ending, that they were something that I felt like was really pleasurable. Um, but for a lot of people, and I hear this from um, a lot of women, in fact, that they've had a partner who wanted to do anal and either didn't give them enough time to relax into it or that they, um, you know, they kind of... Uh, we do the oops wrong hole you know and and like um and what happens is that it's painful if you're not relaxed and ready for it but unfortunately that sets up this feeling that all anal sex must be painful and exactly. and so like i i when i was working at pleasure chest i used to hear that from from customers a lot of like i want to i want to want to do this but every time, you know, it's like it, it's going to hurt. And that's the expectation yeah. that I have. Um, I think the other one that I hear a lot is people who are like, it's going to be dirty. Like, what mm -hmm. happens if, if like, there's poop? And, um, you know, I'm kind of like, well, poop happens. That's just, yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like when we're, you know, like, sex is not sanitary, um, and pleasure is not sanitary. It's like, you know, we, we have lots of, lots of bodily fluids and lots of other stuff that are happening. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of fear of like, what mm -hmm. might happen if our partner, you know, is like, if, if we get something in there, what might they think of me? Does it make me a dirty person? Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause like, you know, how often have we been told like, oh, that's your, you know, that's your no, no, like don't, yeah. don't touch there. And so like, there's so much baggage for a lot of us to unpack before we can even get to a place where anal can be something that we look at as a pleasure based activity. Absolutely. And finding ways to be able to talk about this openly and finding education mm -hmm. is so important because that's yeah. the only way that you can really move past some of these stigmas and some of these um, limiting factors that really might be making you nervous to try. And once mm -hmm. you actually start hearing other people's experiences and, um, you know, hearing that it's not always perfect, but it's okay to, you know, if you and your partner have great communication and you're, you know, you're open about that this is new for you and you're exploring, you know, you let, finding ways to get past those, those anxieties can um, once you get past them it can be a lot of fun yeah um, the last thing that I want to say before we start launching into the the stuff is like anal play doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take 
something big in order for it to count. Um, like you can have amazing anal play just staying on the outside. Um, you know, for a lot of people, it's using a vibrator against the outside of the anal sphincter or um, doing analingus and using your mouth and your tongue and your lips to pleasure your partner's butt. Like that, that is, that qualifies as anal play. Like you don't mm -hmm. have to like be this, you don't have to like go this far in order to be legitimate. Um, the, the point is to find what it gives you pleasure and then explore from that perspective. Um, you know, like it's a hot anal play date if nobody ever goes into anybody's anything. It's totally fine. Like there's no, you know, if it feels good then and everybody's happy with it, then it's all good. Right. Um, and so, it's okay to like have evolving, you know, to start maybe, mm -hmm. you know, and as you explore more, you might say like, you know, find that you're, yeah. you're willing to explore more. So start slow yeah. if you're, you're new to this and then see mm -hmm. what feels good. Yeah. It's like, it's like you have to seduce your ass. Basically. <laughs> you do. It, you totally it's do. So, so true. Um, Hannah, would you, would you advance the slide um, for my fancy schmancy? Um, yeah, y'all are getting like the results of like the fact that I have these slides up for, for stuff that I do else, elsewhere. Um, um, yeah, that's the one I wanted. So, um, <clears throat> so if you have not seen, um, this is, this is sort of from the side view. This is what your, your butt looks like. Did y'all know this? This is like, we're, we're like in, in junior high school health class or, or <laughs> actually, actually there's a penis there. So it might be high school health class. Um, so this is just to give you an idea of when we're talking about butts, um, what we're, you know, like what we're talking about. So I'm going to do a really quick drive through of your, of your butt anatomy. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is um, that there's okay so you've got the anus and that's the thing that that you see if you're like looking at your own butt um by the way if you haven't looked at your own butt i highly recommend it get a mirror if you're able to or get a partner who takes some pictures because like seeing your own body can be a really empowering thing um but the anus is kind of like um it's a really it's proof that your body has a sense of humor because one of it's actually two sphincters and they're they're like right like this. Like I don't I'm I'm not used to doing this for So you've got two different sphincters. <clears throat> one of them you can relax and control, the other one you can't. So it's kind of like it's like na nature's April Fool's joke is like, <laughs> ah, you know. Um, but those two sphincters basically work in conjunction. One of them you can relax, um, and that's the outer sphincter. The other one you need your body to kind of relax into. And and there are some ways that you can help do that. And, and actually, I'm going to let Miley talk about that in a minute. But I want to do the quick run through of, of like if we're going in. So you've got the two sphincters and that's that's your anus. Um, <clears throat> the rectum is the tube that's that is further in. And the rectum's entire job is basically to hold on to shit. Um, so it's kind of like you know, I was going to make a joke about it. It's kind of like my, my guest room. It's like, it just holds on to all of the shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a day apparently. Um, but, but the other job of the rectum, which is really, really important when we're thinking about doing any kind of anal play that involves penetration is the rectum's job is to actually pull water out of anything that's put in there to make it like really efficient and, and kind of compact everything. So when you're using lubricant, if you're using a water-based lube, keep in mind that your body is literally going to slurp up the water out of the lube, which is why we talk about lube when we're talking about anal play so much, because we want to make sure that like you're not chafing, you're not breaking the, you know, breaking any veins or, or capillaries that are on the surface of that. The rectum, depending on your height and your body, because everybody's is a little different, is anywhere between like four and six inches long. Um, and then what happens is it does a hard curve um, and becomes the becomes the descending colon and the the sigmoid colon. So so like really what we're talking about is we're just talking about like that four to six inch tube of of um, of rectum and and like that's where it's fun to put things. Um, the other cool thing is it, it's fun to put things there. Um, if you look on the anatomy chart, you'll see that there is. Um, on the one that has a penis, um, there is kind of uh, a little walnut-shaped thing that is near the rectal wall, and that's the prostate. Um, 
And whether or not you, whether you have a prostate or a G spot, you can do stimulation. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> Hannah's like, got the little like pointer going. Um, but prostates and G spots are essentially, they behave in a lot of the same ways when it comes to pleasure. So um, a lot of people will enjoy doing anal play in order to get to uh, more direct prostate stimulation or more direct G spot stimulation. Um, so um, you can actually see kind of on the one with the vulva, but I, <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> Hannah wasn't doing the prostate. That's the motion. Uh, <laughs> Hannah was doing this. <laughs> um, but um, when we're when we're thinking about bodies, um, when we're looking at folks who have a vagina and a uterus, um, notice that that vaginal wall is actually really thin between the rectum and the vagina. So if you're doing penetration into one of those, there's going to be like a little bit of extra girth going on for the other. So um, mostly just want to walk you through that. And then uh, Hannah, can you advance one more slide? Um, awesome. So this is the front view. Um, and this kind of gives you a little bit more. You can kind of see the two sphincters um, for the anus, you can also, so they get really, you know, really like if you're a total nerd, you're like, oh, there are four valves to the rectum. Um, but if you're using your fingers and you're going in, you can actually feel all of those. Um, so now that we've done the fastest walkthrough of anal anatomy that I've ever done in my life, um, Miley, what, um, tell us about what you know from being, uh, active in natural childbirth circles. Yes. So funny that when we started talking about basics of anal play, um, I immediately started thinking back to, um, we've talked about this, my favorite midwife, Ina May. Um, mm -hmm. She coined the concept of sphincter law, which is this idea that um, the sphincters in your body, so, you know, your anus, your cervix, your vaginal sphincters, um, they function in a way that is both... Um, that is really connected to um, your mind-body connection. And the way that you are feeling, if you are not feeling safe, if you are feeling um, shocked, surprised, the, um, the hormones that your body um, releases in, when you have those types of emotion um, are directly counterproductive to the hormones that you actually need to relax. So, you know, when we think of when you're starting off with some anal play, I know my previous experiences, like we've said, you know, you have those experiences where you're like, just starting out, maybe you don't know the basics, you don't know like how slow to go. And as something's penetrating, you can have this intense sensation. And it's so funny, because in childbirth, as a baby's crowning, and um, right before birth, we, it's called the ring of fire. It's this really intense sensation mm -hmm. of stretching that really when, if you're not using breathing techniques, if you're not um, reminding your body to, to relax and actually, you know, mm -hmm. taking the time to kind of meditate into that, you can have this intense, like intense sense of like panic. Um, and I would say that is the same type of feeling that I had the first couple times I tried anal play with. Yeah, so it's really important that as you're having those intense sensations, you can actually help your body to relax into it so that you can allow yourself the, the pleasurable sensations. And some ways that you can do that are with breathing. So really um, belly breathing and abdominal breathing. One thing we always say in childbirth is that pain makes you tend to tense up. And when you breathe in a way where you're, you know, if you want to do it with me, take a couple breaths where you tense up versus now relax your body and keep your mouth loose and do a couple breaths like this. Yeah. That's such a different feeling. And when you feel nervous mm -hmm. or a pain, your automatic body response is that tense. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, again, counterproductive when something's trying to penetrate you. If you mm -hmm. tense up during that, that feeling, your whole body, including yeah. your anus, is going to tense right up. And it's going to make it more painful, and it's going to make it harder to actually continue with penetration. If you yeah. can just remind yourself to relax, take some deep breaths, 
Um, and really go slow at that point where you're feeling that most intense sensation. Use a lot mm -hmm. of lube. Um, have really good communication with your partner so that you know um, and they know when you're good to keep going, when you need them to, you know, mm -hmm. slow down, when you need them to stop. And really build that trust because that's the other piece too is aside from reminding yourself to breathe, if your environment doesn't feel safe or you're nervous or you're having those fears of, you know, what's going to happen? Is there going to be yeah. some shit involved? That's all going to, again, make you tense up and it's going to be hard yep. to relax. So both yep. setting the environment so that you can feel relaxed and mm -hmm. then also using these techniques as you're feeling those sensations. Um, it's really important. So yeah. some of my favorite techniques from INMA show, he says, keep your, if your mouth is loose, everything, all your other sphincters will be yep. loose. So again, keep your jaw loose, you know, um, low moaning sounds can be really mm -hmm. helpful. The, ah, that yeah. kind of breathing can really just help your body loosen up and then you mm -hmm. can maybe experience the pleasure. And even if you're not going to be doing anal receiving, um, having having your mouth open and breathing deeply and moaning or making noise is actually one of the easiest ways to ex start expanding your orgasms. Um, because if we're not tensing up, most people, like a lot of us kind of do this, um, and the reality is like when we start breathing into our orgasms, for people who are looking to explore G-spot orgasms or prostate orgasms, like it is 100% connected to your breath and how you flow with it. So I wanted you to hear that um, because I think it's a really critical piece of like how we, you know, kind of embody our sexuality a little bit differently. Now you talked about a couple of, uh, you talked about lube. Um, I want us to talk a little bit about what you need, absolutely need to have. So like I would say if nothing else, you really, 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 really need lube. Period. End of story. Um, the reason is because you're like everybody's rectum is a delicate and fragile flower and it needs to be treated well. And the more lube that you have, if you're going to penetrate, whether, whether it's just a fingertip or whether it's with a toy or a penis or something bigger, um, you need the lube to help make sure that you're not doing damage and that it's comfortable. Um, so when, and we know that butts like water. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're choosing a lube that's going to be providing that cushion because we need that cushion between whatever's going in and, and our rectum. Um, I, I generally recommend um, with this, based on what kind of toy material you're using, you can use three different kinds of lube. Um, they're basically three. Um, a water-based lube, I would say a thicker water-based lube, something that is very body-friendly, um, but kind of more of like a gel consistency or a thicker consistency. Um, that will provide some of that cushion, and because it's a thick consistency, it'll last a little bit longer than a thin water-based lube, which is kind of like, if you think about it, it's like if you're trying to add padding and you pour like a really thin lube and it just kind of runs off, it's like that's not really doing the job for you. Um, the other kinds of lube that you might want to use, and I actually really like these two for anal play, um, I love silicone lube because silicone actually does not, the molecules are too big to absorb into the body, so it stays on the surface of the tissue, so it lasts a lot longer in terms of slickness. There are silicone lubes that are thicker as well that will cling on to toys or cling on to fingers better. Um, I actually uh, got one recently that is a CBD silicone lube that's a nice thick one um, that also does a really good job of helping to relax um, the body a little bit. Um, I would stay away from things like analese because those have um, the active ingredient in those is um, benzocaine, which is the same thing that they put in chloroseptic so that you numb your throat. Um, and you don't want to numb because numbing means you can't feel the pleasure. Numbing also meals, means that if something goes wrong, you're not going to feel it. And so like mm -hmm. that, like, hey, wait, that's not so good for me anymore. Um, so like I would say like if you've used numbing lubes in the past and it's really a choice that you want to make, just be aware that if you do that, like you're, you're going to potentially be having your body go through things that you're not getting to feel. And, and that can be good, but it also can be bad. So um, the third kind of lube, and, and for folks with vulvas and vaginas, you may have been told not to use oil-based lubes, and, and I stand by that. Um, however, for anal play, 
um, oil-based lubes can actually be a really good solution because they do tend to stay really slippery for a much longer period of time. Um, and butts don't mind oil as much as vaginas do. Um, so if you, if you want to do butt play, I actually really like coconut oil, um, frankly. Like coconut yeah. oil works great for fingers. Um, but finding a lube that is, is healthy for your body is really critical. So like if you wouldn't put it in your mouth and eat it, you don't want to put it into your butt, um, mm -hmm. because your butt absorbs everything that goes in there. Um, side note, your butt literally absorbs everything that goes in there without going through the bloodstream. Um, so actually, Justin, you can use coconut oil in the vagina for many people. It's okay. Um, but we, we tend to, um, we tend to have this thing about like no oil based lubes in the vagina because it actually doesn't allow the 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 flora the bacterial flora to to kind of do the self cleaning thing. But coconut oil is fine in the vagina. Um, the challenge, the other thing about coconut oil is it may not be compatible with the condoms that you're using. So if you're using mm -hmm. a condom, right. whether it's for cleaning or safer sex, coconut oil may break it down. There's, there's, you know, nobody's actually done a lot of research on coconut oil and, and, and lube or condoms yet. Um, I'm really hopeful that somebody will because it would be nice as a sex educator for me to be able to go like, yes, you can do that or no, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oil, coconut oil is kind of like uh, the one lube that I feel like everybody's body can use. Um, pretty well, whether it's uh, vaginally or rectally. Um, so, so those are the basic three kinds of lube. The other thing that I would like to invite you to do if you're using hands, which I, I recommend because they're like nature's cheapest sex toys and they can <laughs> feel things and you carry them around with you everywhere. It's like, they, you know, you don't have to go like, where the fuck did I leave my hand today? Um, if you're going to play with butts, I recommend gloves. Um, I recommend gloves for a couple of reasons. One is um, that it makes the surface of your skin into a really smooth toy. Um, so all of those, um, like if you look down at your hands um, and I look at mine and go like, oh, that likes all of those little hangnails and cuticle things and calluses. Um, your ass is nature's magnifying glass and you will feel every one of those things and it will cut down the amount of time you can play. Um, so throwing a glove on and lubing it up is a great way to do it. Um, B, they're like sexy as fuck. Like this glove when it's got lube on it is black and shiny and it's like, ooh, we're having some fun now. Um, the other thing is particularly if you're a little nervous about like, oh my God, what if there's a little bit of uncleanness? Um, all you have to do is inside out with the glove and your partner never sees it. So if your partner is really nervous about it or if you're just like, I just want to be able to clean everything up real easily you can take it off. And if you're going to go on to playing with other parts of your partner's body, you don't have to worry about, you know, like your hand being dirty. So I am a huge fan of, of using gloves. Um, I, th I just think that they, they make things a lot easier and I'm also really lazy. And so like after I play, I don't want to have to like go and truck everything to the bathroom and scrub everything down. It's like, Oh, if I can take the glove off, it makes my life a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what would you say folks should have as well, Miley? Um, um, you know, using condoms um, are great for your toys, too. So same principle. If you're putting gloves on because you're just, like, you're worried about, you know, cleanliness or even, you know, if you mm -hmm. have toys that maybe you use vaginally that you want to use um, anally, throw a condom on it because same thing. After you're done playing, you can take that right off your toy. Um, and you know, you don't have to worry about any cross contamination. You don't have to worry about like if it's safe to go, you know, back and forth, you can then play with other people. Mm -hmm. you, so using a condom, um, not only with your partner, but on your toys is a great way to, um, explore if you're, if that makes you nervous or yeah. like I said, if you're going back and forth with toys, um, vaginally and anally. I definitely recommend that. Yeah, and the rule is if you've got two holes, if you've got a vagina and a rectum, you can go front to back, but don't go back to front because the front hole doesn't like the bacteria that the back hole pr produces. So for some people that like to be able to go back and forth, having a condom on for one of those can be a good way of, of doing that without triggering out something like bacterial vaginosis or triggering a yeast infection. And nobody really wants to have sex that puts them out of commission for more sex. So, right. you know, yeah. 
Um, no so harm, about- right? We're here not. We're here for for fun, not for yeah, her. yeah. <laughs> you know, no accidental oopsies. Like we don't want yeah. the accidental oopsies. Um, so a lot of people start with with just fingers um, and kind of self exploration or partner exploration. Um, some people also like to use toys. Oh my god. We're going to talk about sex toys. <gasps> you know? Um, yeah. Um, so we're not um, into sex toys at all here. No, no. We, 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 we just have these three samples next to us. We don't own a personal collection or anything. Um, so, so like when people are looking at what kind of toy might they want to put in their butt, what is the one rule, Miley, about what to put, not put in your butt? All right, we need to talk about making sure you have a widely flared base because things mm-hmm. that do not have a widely flared base often get sucked up. Your your um mm-hmm. your rectum is like a vacuum. So if you have a toy that does not have a flared base, you run the risk of losing that toy. And those are things that will send mm-hmm. you to the ER if you can't get them out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and nobody wants to be that person. Like you know, like that's, that's not a thing. So when we talk about a flared base, um, the cool thing is most places that make butt plugs know that there should be a base on it. Um, and they put it there for a reason. Um, so, so I got a really friendly little toy. It's um, a great size. Yeah. It's, this is a great newbie size because it's literally mm. like a little bit thicker than the size of my finger. Um, it's got a nice like tapered tip to it. Um, not a pointy one because sometimes pointy is actually not as easy to get in. Um, mm-hmm. But you can you can put lube on this and just kind of run it around the butt like this and wait until the butt kind of goes like oh oh yeah we're good with that and and it opens up a little bit. Um, but this has a little flared base. It also has a little nicely shaped base, so it sits between butt cheeks really nice. Um, mm-hmm. So if you want to put this in while you're doing something else, like playing with the front part of your body or, you know, doing something with your partner, um, this is this is a great basic small butt plug. This comes from a company called Tantus. It's silicone, so it's totally non-porous, so you don't have to worry about it retaining any bacteria. Just soap and water will clean it. Um, I also Sarah, got- I'm like shocked that that's from Tantus because Tantus, like their standard is just size, like yeah. massive toys. So like yeah. I'm so excited to see that they have that oh, small yeah. alternative because I'm just so used to their toys being like, go big or go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the nice thing is like it's nice to know that they have volume control. You know, they have a range. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's great to see some of the – I've actually never seen that product. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm glad you yeah, that one. I love this one. It's. <laughs> I mean, it's just like this is great for people who are like, I don't know if I want a butt plug because we kind of mentally think about butt plugs being big. And it's like, no, it doesn't have to be big to pack a punch. Um, this is – if you're going to go for pegging or you want a dildo um, – and honestly, I would also say that dildos are really good for people who don't necessarily have as much um, ability to reach – because with a longer toy, um, you actually can come, you don't have to have quite as much of an ability to bend your body. Um, this, again, is a dildo that has a nice flared base on it, so it's great for a harness. Um, the other kind of nice thing about this, it doesn't have a lot of ridges on it. And I find for folks who are mm. relatively new to anal play, you know, fewer ridges and ripples and things like that. Um, you know, they they can kind of do a great job. Um, I, I see the question, and I'm going to get there in a second. Um, so I will say that depending on how much of a, a practice that somebody has with receiving anal, sometimes the bases do need to be bigger. Um, because if somebody is going to relax a lot, um, I have seen people who with smaller bases have been able to pull them in, um, which is no bueno. Um, yeah. But generally so. what I tell folks is to like look at the difference between the size of the stem on the toy and the size of the base. And if that just if you look at it and go like that doesn't look big enough, you're probably right. Um, yeah, so if you guys um, had a chance to catch it uh, when we had Ariel Orgasmic on, she shared a story about this exact thing where mm-hmm. um, she had a little mishap. Um, So let me see. I'll find that episode and we'll link to it before the end of the show. And then I actually recently spoke to another person who had a very similar experience. So, um, yeah, great question. 
those butt plugs are very popular. What um, Cecil's referring to is uh, there's the the gl- they're usually glass um, glass plugs that have like jeweled bases that the, are pretty. The metal ones are the worst because oh, they have okay, a yeah, smaller sorry. base on them. Um, um, but I I will use this as an opportunity to tease y'all with a little something. Um, so this is actually a glass jewel base butt plug from a company called uh, Crystal Delights, um, and I it's hard to see because it's glass, but you can see it's a really narrow stem right there. But look at how much bigger that base is. Um, and so this one is bigger than the ones you're talking about, the metal ones. Um, definitely much better fit. Um, this, by the way, is going to be a giveaway. Uh, this is a brand new plug from Crystal Delights that they sent us. So we will be doing a giveaway on this gorgeous plug for one of one of our lucky social media folks. So make sure you're following us on social media, and I'll put that away. Ah, yeah, that's uh, so pretty. <laughs> Um, but it really does depend in a lot of cases on how experienced the person who is receive, who is wearing the butt plug is. Um, because if they are super relaxed and super into bigger toys, you definitely don't want to put something with a smaller base in there. Um, so, you know, uh, the other kind of nice thing is if you have the ability to, um, if you're going to purchase toys, if you shop with a company that uh, really does sex positive education, um, where you can actually talk to the staff and ask them, like, what is the feedback then? Um, a lot of times they will guide you in finding the right fit for what you're looking for. Um, I know that we've got, you know, like we've partnered with companies like um, Early to Bed and Vava Voom in Asheville and uh, Shag in Brooklyn and Forbidden Fruit in Austin, Texas. So there's lots of lots of places that do online sales, but you can actually talk to them and say like, hey, I've got a really experienced partner. What plugs might be a good fit for them that would be really safe? Um, so um, I also have another, uh, this is this is not the giveaway one. This is like, I got very excited when I saw this because uh, the base on this that. actually sits right between the butt cheeks really nicely. Um, glass, metal, and, um, and silicone are all really great materials for anal toys um, because they are all totally non-porous. So they're much easier to keep clean. They're not going to hold on to bacteria. You're gonna be you're gonna be good to go with them. Um, so um, you can throw them you, in the dishwasher. You can boil you can. them. Like you can. Yeah. I mean, don't throw them. That's rude. But don't like, throw no, them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> treat them rude nicely. Treat, treat, but treat them well enough. You can treat you well. <laughs> you can take uh, them for a nice spin cycle. <laughs> I also I also <laughs> grabbed um, a prostate stem toy. So this is this is a, a from a company called Aneros, um, and this basically goes in and then presses against the prostate. So um, and again, this is not really big. This is actually like a medical grade plastic and silicone. This was made specifically for prostate massage. Um, so so there are lots and lots of different toys. The ones that I just showed you are all super safe for butts, um, and they're all basic beginner toys. Um, like if you if this is not your first time at the Ass Play Rodeo, you can you know you can. <laughs> Figure out what you want. Um, yeehaw. Uh, yeehaw. Well, you know, cowboy position or cow- reverse cowgirl is actually great for anal, but, you know. Um, so the other thing is about, like, how do we get them in there, right? Um, so, Miley, you talked a little bit about the breathing. Um, I also mm-hmm. want to talk about, like, seducing. I, I love the phrase seducing the ass. Um, I and I actually learned this from... Um, I, when I fir- when I did my first anal play workshop as an attendee, um, and I was watching Tristan Terramino talk about it, um, mm-hmm. and she she talked about like you don't you don't poke people because it's rude, um, and she talked about using the pad of your finger um, to actually just massage in a really small circle, and part of what that does is a it gets it starts getting those nerve endings kind of going like oh what's this mm-hmm. you're staying on the outside of the butt so there's no like there's no worry about like, oh, something's going to hurt. Nothing's going to hurt. Lube that finger up and just kind of start doing that. And what happens is as the person's body relaxes into it, um, you'll actually kind of, the the uh, anal sphincter will just kind of start opening up on its own. And, and it's a really simple thing to just tip it in. 
If you're not using fingers and you're using a, a toy like this, you can do the exact same thing. Um, you can do the exact same thing with the head of the, the dildo. Mm -hmm. um, but giving it plenty of time and waiting for the butt to relax is one really good way to start. Um, you know, and, and honestly, if you have vib a vibrator, you can do that with a yeah. vibrating toy. That also helps relax the muscles a little bit. Um, but get the person who's who's receiving, whether that's you or your partner, um, into a place where it's like it's it's all about feeling good. There's like, you know, maybe you're getting off a little bit. Some people find that having a genital orgasm beforehand helps them be more relaxed. Yeah. So um, try it lots of different ways. But make sure that you're kind of doing this light. Start with a light massage and wait until the person's body lets you know that it's time to go. Um, and it's kind of magical too. Like I don't know if you've ever like actually done that, and yeah, felt when it you just kind of, it just kind of goes like it opens up a little bit, and you're like, oh, it's it's yeah, it's <laughs> it, you're like oh yes, I'm doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. You can pat yeah. yourself. You pat yourself on the back. Yeah, the sure. other <laughs> thing that I recommend, whether it's you that's fairly new to it, or if you're with a new partner, um, is to even if you're doing something that's like a power exchange where, where there's like a dom sub kind of a dynamic to your play or your sex, um, encourage the person who is receiving to control how fast penetration happens. Mm -hmm. um, because for a lot of us, it is not at all uncommon to have like penetration when it first happens. It's like we get that ring of fire kind of like whole, you know, and your body does and yeah. And whew, and so we need to be able to have have a chance to breathe through that. Um, and not only is that is that less challenging for their body, but what it does is it builds a relationship between their body and their mind and you that it you know it's not going to go too fast. And it's like if they say slow down or stop, and you stop, and they have a chance to breathe around it, and then they can kind of get more into it. It lets their body kind of get to that point more easily in the future. Um, because like our body will remember stuff and, and it will react accordingly. Um, yeah. And having that trust with your partner too, that, you know, you can mm -hmm. trust them, that they will respond yeah. to you and that they're going to be paying attention to, you know, are you feeling good? Do you need a moment? Are you, mm -hmm. and you know, building that trust with your partner is really important too. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and I, I, you know, I joke that my husband and I joke that before I'm, when I met him, I'm like, I had those experiences in my past where I like had tried it with a couple partners, didn't have like the knowledge to do it, you know, in a way that was safe and comfortable and felt pleasurable. And so I was like, I just wrote it off as like, not for me, in a place mm -hmm. not for me. And then it wasn't until like yeah. I was with my husband for a really long time and we started really slowly exploring it that I really was able to get past that and um, yeah. actually start to enjoy it. But it was because, you know, I really had that level of trust with him and, and yeah. he was willing to, we had that connection where he really was, was, you know, paying attention to how I was feeling. And, and that's so important as you're getting going. So making sure that you have yeah. a good, a good trust with your partners. Yeah. yeah. Always. And communi and that communication piece. Um, you know, some people um, to kind of talk a little bit about power exchange, I've seen it work really well where it's like, you know, you can use like a safe word or a safe signal to let them know when to stop, especially because a lot of a lot of times people really like to kind of have their face away from their partner when they're being penetrated. So mm -hmm. you may not be able to see the expression. So, you know, you can do things like, you know, tapping the mattress a couple of times, or if you, if you're the dominant and you want to both feel like, you know, like, Hey, I'm in control, but also I want to do this at a pace that my submissive or my bottom can handle. You can say things like, you know, like, you know, like you, you know, like you better push back if you like this. And, and that kind of lets them, it gives them the ability to kind of like mm -hmm. advocate for what their body needs in a way that still sounds like it's a control and a command thing. Yeah. Um, you know, so you can get really creative about how you pace um, anal. Um, I actually like to recommend also like the person who's receiving be on top of the person who is, is penetrating, whether it's their hand or the dildo or their penis. Um, or their mouth, whatever you're playing with. If you're the person on top, there's a couple of things that are happening. One is you inherently have a little bit more control over angle and depth and things like that. But the other thing is your pelvic floor muscles are actually more open. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it, it kind of, you know, if you think about it, like it kind of 
lets this happen, which makes it much easier for penetration. Um, so, so even if you don't normally get on top, getting on top might be a fun thing to try for anal play. Um, there's also the, the thing about the angle of entry. Um, and as, as somebody who enjoys being the penetrator sometimes, um, like getting the, getting the angle mm -hmm. right is a little bit challenging because it's like, if you remember from those, the, the initial slide, like the rectum doesn't just go like this. It's not, right. it's not a right angle. And, but most people want to penetrate like a right angle. And it's like, actually the rectum kind of curves up towards the belly or, you know, kind of curves around like that. And so when we're entering, we want to make sure that we're taking time to figure out like, what is the angle? Um, one of the reasons I like this particular toy is because there's a little mm -hmm. bit of, of a flex to it. Um, really rigid toys don't often feel as comfortable for people um, as toys that have a little bit more flexibility. Um, so, so yeah, pay attention to your angle of entry as well. Um, yeah, use, if you might need to use pillows, like find ways to prop your, yourself up or support mm -hmm. your, um, your, if you're, depending, even if you're, if you're, um, laying down on your back, you know, you might need some pillows just to elevate your hips up more. Mm -hmm. Or if you're even having some pillows, if you're, um, like if you're on all fours or something, have, having some pillows just to give you some support underneath, you can, um, yeah. be helpful. Yeah. There's like, you yeah. know, there's a ton of different, um, positioning pillows out there specifically for sex. Um, some of them can be pretty pricey, but, uh, mm -hmm. regular old pillows work great too. <laughs> Yeah, until you're 50 and you have a bum back, and then you've got you've got the Liberator collection like we have. <laughs> um, but no, it's you know a lot of it is getting in the right position. It's kind of like I say the same thing before an oral sex class is like you know like you've got to get into a position where you can be comfortable for a little while because nobody wants to have to tap out of you know a really hot, sexy, fun time because their their neck was starting to get a crick in or they got a Charlie horse. Like we've all been there. And, and if we can solve for that ahead of time, um, that's really great. So we have, um, we have like 10, 15 more minutes left. Um, but I wanted to make sure that y'all know that we're totally available for questions, throw them into the chat. Um, otherwise, you know, I mean, we'll keep going, but we would really love to answer your questions as well. Um, yeah. Um, while you guys are thinking of questions, I, um, I think I mentioned it on Twitter. So I have to tell my story about how, I started I truly started yes. the month with with a little mishap um a little you know August mishap so uh on August 1st I went in my little I was getting ready for something and I went in my panty drawer and I pulled out a pair of panties that were heavy and I was like what <laughs> very confused mm -hmm. and they were sticky and slimy and I immediately realized that I spilled an entire bottle of silicone anal lube in my panty drawer. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to ask Sarah, I'm like, Sarah, any suggestions for how to get this out of my entire panty drawer? And Sarah's like, you can try Dawn, um, but good luck because mm -hmm. you're going to have a hard time. So yeah. make sure you store your items. You're taking care of your sex toys is important, yeah. but taking care of your lubes and stuff. Um, it, my my fatal error was that the night before we had our our hashtag open ed session and I decided mm -hmm. that I should put my lubes away and not have them visible and usually I never do that I never put them in a drawer and yep I have learned my lesson <laughs> this is why for silicone lubes I really like this like dropper top because the yeah yeah you got um, good pump. because when you roll over on top of it when you're having sex and the lube didn't make it all the way onto the bedside table you are less sad about what happens that's yeah. why i like yeah. drop her thoughts um brianna has a great question uh what are your thoughts on enema hoses um so i would say like if you feel like 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 a you can clean out because it's a hot and sexy fun time um as well so that like that might be part of the appeal for uh, for some folks. Um, I think that if you're going to want to clean out beforehand, remember you've only got like that four to six inches of, re of rectum that you've got to go through. Um, a, a, a standard enema bulb will work really well for that. Maybe it takes two or three of them. Um, you put the water in, you kind of let it, let it sit for a little while and your body will tell you when it's time to let it go. Um, if you've had a BM in the last six hours, you may not have much of an issue. 
Um, and also, if you're on a high fiber diet and a low fat diet, you're going to naturally be a little bit more clean uh, in between BMs. Um, if you're going to use uh, like an enema hose, like a shower shot, um, like remember that they're, you know, like you want to not overdo it. Um, so a lot of people will, you want to get one that the ones that connect to your shower should have a little valve that turn off and on. And so it's the kind of thing where you're going to put it in, you're going to turn it on for a little bit, and then you're going to kind of turn it off and make sure that you're moderating it. Um, there are shower shots that have silicone, uh, nozzles that are very flexible and those are a lot easier on the body than, than the metal ones. Um, so, so you can get them, um, uh, you know, the shower shots I think start at about 45 or $50. Um, but for a lot of people, it's just one of like the little anal douche bulbs that they get for under 10, $15. Um, mm -hmm. and just, just a little bit of like warm tap water is totally fine for those. Um, so that's my, that's my answer. Please redirect me if you need it. Um, do glass toys chip and should they be washed separately? So any glass toy can chip if it has engaged in trauma. Um, I, the reason that I talk about Crystal Delights, um, there are other toy companies who do this as well, um, is you want to look for something that has a tempered glass. So it's like Pyrex. And what happens with tempered glass is it's less likely to chip. Um, and if it's going to break, you're going to see the break. It's going to be really, really clear. Not every toy company uses tempered glass, so it's important to kind of like check the toy ahead of time. Um, in my entire time of owning glass toys, I've only had one that is chipped, um, and that was because it banged up repeatedly in my toy bag with a metal toy, um, and it was really apparent. Um, and I had one break when I dropped it from a height of about six feet onto a tile floor. Um, other than that, like always check the surface of your toys to make sure there are no problems. But I've actually found that glass toys are as durable as my other toy materials. Um, just check and them. Go ahead, on that, um, and you know, where you buy your toys, especially with like glass toys, I would say is really important. You know, Amazon might not be where you want to go to buy your glass toys. Cause like Sarah said, how they're made is really important. Um, I'm just going to pop a link. We did a blog piece a while back about um, some sex positive shops. And these are all sex shops that, um, you know, Sarah has vetted and, and we, you know, we trust their recommendations. So um, any of those shops would be great mm -hmm. resources if you're looking specifically for glass toys. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for truly like the quality of your sex toys is so important. You never know what kind of materials could be used if you're you're buying stuff that yeah. um, these smaller companies that are um, doing all their production in China and stuff. So especially like you said with safety and glass toys, like mm -hmm. I would really not skimp on um, the products you're buying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Brianna actually asked about the CBD lube. Um, I got I got mine from a company called the Noir Leaf in part because it's a black owned business and it's somebody who's been in the industry for a long time um, and they know what they're doing. Um, I did not I have not tried for you. I've heard great things about it because my body doesn't like a lot of lube ingredients and Foria's ingredients list has some stuff on it that throws me off. That having been said, I've heard really good things about it. Um, I got this one in particular because the only ingredients are the CBD and the lube and the silicone. Um, and so for my body, this was just a better choice. Um, and you can like, there are a couple of them. I think Foria is the one that I was first to the market. Um, and so like they've, they've definitely had some like user testing and people feel really good for it. Um, so, and Foria is actually pretty widely available. Um, so thank you for mentioning Foria as well, Justin. I, I would not have thought of them immediately just because this is the one right in front of me. Um, actually, other, yeah, we were talking about coconut before and I'm looking now and they have a coconut oil, um, CBD lube. Yeah. Yeah, they have some really good stuff. Um, the problem is that the CBD loops are a little bit more expensive. So, like, I, I kind of tell people, like, start off with those and then move over to a different lube uh, after those have kind of kind of set in. Like, if you're, like, if you're doing, like, a long session, I don't know that I would rely on your CBD lube for all of that. Um, it is absolutely worth it. And I'm, I'm like, man, I, I. I kind of like bit the bullet to buy this one and I was like, oh yeah, this is okay. Now I get it. Now I get it. 
Treat um, yourself sometimes, you know, you, you have to, like, if you can't treat yourself in the bedroom, why, like, you know, like the, the self-love is about our bodies. And if we're going to do some self-care, like our sexuality has to be part of that. Um, for sure. Um, I think the other, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, just a couple of little pro, literally pro tips. Um, some of these were shared with me for from uh, folks who are performers, um, and they make a lot of sense. Um, one tip that I love is um, after anal play, and actually even after heavy vaginal play, like if you're doing a lot of penetration or um, multiple partners in one night, um, making a comp cool compress with a washcloth. Um, I really like those, um, the microfiber washcloths that you get in the bundles. You can even get them at the dollar store just because they're so soft on the body. Um, but with a solution of witch hazel and water, because the witch hazel actually um, reduces inflammation. Um, if you're somebody who has a little bit of an issue with hemorrhoids, which a lot of us do, um, that will also help. But using the witch hazel and water solution to kind of like clean and soothe afterwards can be a really, really great way of kind of like doing some aftercare um, and not just cleaning up, but also like making sure your body rebounds really well. Um, so I never heard that tip before. I love that because yeah. again, so after childbirth, tucks medicated pads, the little mm -hmm. hemorrhoid pads. That's what mm -hmm. we tell we tell mamas to put right, uh, right yep. on their, their vagina cause it, and their vulva because it really just helps that witch hazel. So yeah, yeah, that makes perfect yeah. sense. And like extra pro tip, throw those suckers in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when we're cleaning, like, we're, you know, we want to clean afterwards. We want to get any lube residue away. But also it's like we want to give our bodies a chance to kind of come back to it. Another one of those really problematic myths about anal play is that if you do it too much, your butt won't come back to the, <laughs> the normal size. And, and I'm kind of like, okay, so if that were actually the case, we would have a lot of people dropping out of the porn industry really early, um, and, and that's not the case. Like, if we treat our bodies well and we give them a chance to relax into things and we're not causing damage, like, anal pleasure, like, like we didn't just invent this in the last 50 years people have been stripping people's butts ever since time immemorial so like we're not new to the table with any of not that we just, have, we just have better tools now one of my favorite mic drop moments i remember like just either hearing or reading and i went oh my god yes was the concept and i think this might be another ina may one that um there seems to be this concept that penises are the only body part that can expand and contract with, you know, as many times as necessary throughout a lifetime yeah. and never be told that um, they're going to be damaged permanently, that they're loose, yeah. that they're no good yeah. anymore. And it's like, huh, interesting, huh? Because, you know, the same thing, we we hear the same thing with women that, you know, uh, people who have vaginas and, and are sexually active a lot, that they're they're going to destroy their, their vulva and, and it's these ridiculous notions. Um, yeah that are meant to control yeah. sexuality and it's just and just when you think of it that way that oh yes how funny that nobody seems to be saying like if you get too many erections and stretch your penis mm -hmm. out too many times you're gonna never be the same again yeah yeah it's like oh god <laughs> yeah that's really not mm. <laughs> I think, that, I think that we, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to sex in general, but anal sex in particular, because it is something that we've, we've had so stigmatized in our culture. And, you know, the, the reality to me is it's like, if you've got a part of your body that you can experience pleasure with, then by gosh, like, experience that pleasure life is short um and if you're doing it in a way that feels good for you and that feels good if you're if you're playing with a partner that everybody's on board with it and everybody's enthusiastically consenting to it um then have at it um it's kind of like the question about the the enema play it's like some people just like to do enemas because they like to do enemas um you know some people like there are people who have gallon yeah. enema bags and that's what they love and it's like as long as they have done their research about like making sure that the solution is okay if that's it you know that's what you're into yeah 
yeah, we all enjoy different things. Um, so we are coming to the end of our time. And before I hand it back over to Miley to, to, to remind us about the app and take us out, um, just to let you know that we have really, really fun things planned for the rest of this month. Um, next week, we actually have Ruby, who is the owner of Club Sapphire, which is one of the West Coast's most popular progressive swing clubs, who is going to talk to us a little bit about swinging and what modern swinging looks like, what you can expect, how to get started. She's going to demystify um, some of the assumptions that we have about swinging as well and kind of talk about like what, what the swing community is like and, and if you're curious about it, how to connect with people. Um, yeah. The week after that, I'm super excited because we have this amazing person. This is Luna Matatis, Yay. and she is going to be doing a pegging and strap-on pleasure class for us. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm so excited about this. Also, she has these amazing um, – I, I might have bought myself some of these. I love these. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, we've got her coming. But in the meantime, if you're exploring Anal August, uh, hop in the app. We're at hashtag open.com. We're free to use and download, um, available on iOS. If you get in the app, you can start swiping and matching. Um, if you have questions, you know the hashtag open team is always around. We can definitely help connect you to resources once you're in the app. So, yeah, download us and give us a try. We would love to have you. And yes. um, we'll see you 